Well, the elderly are among the most vulnerable for the COVID-19 virus. It's why state officials ordered elderly care facilities to temporarily stop those in-person visits from relatives until those positive cases drop in the state. But some say that isolation aimed at protecting them from COVID is also hurting them. With more on this today is North Shore physician, neurologist Dr. Chad Domingue to explain uh, why some doctors like himself and, and some relatives are concerned about this. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You know, so many of the elderly in care facilities already have great medical needs. Um, that's partially the reasons a lot of them are there. Um, some people cannot take care of them on their home. So they would go and they would visit them. But now with these visits no longer happening to contact and hold that person, what are some of the scientific implications neurologically when you stop this? It's a big problem, Liz. And the issue from an from a, a anatomy standpoint, we have so many portions of our brain that are dedicated to social interactions, touching, seeing people, going to places where we once had good memories or interacting with new places. And when we take all those things away, we are basically down-regulating and causing parts of our brain to die because we're no longer engaged with them. I, I use it as an analogy as a gym. If you only work out arms, your legs are going to start to shrink. So if you start taking away all these interactions, parts of those brains are going to start to shrink and, and die. So let's talk about the, the kind of medical conditions uh, that this type of isolation can lead to. And, you know, how would you know this is happening to your loved one? You know, break down some of those examples, especially those with memory uh, de issues, dementia and Alzheimer's. Yeah, you know, Liz, we've been talking about anxiety, depression, insomnia in normal people. Imagine being locked in a nursing home, not being able to see your grandkids, your loved ones, and in the setting of having an underlying neurologic problem such as Alzheimer's disease, where your brain is actively dying by the day. And when you add the anxiety, depression, poor sleep on top of that, you're basically speeding up that process that is going on to the brain and you're pushing these patients into a worsening and neurological function. You're, you're expanding their dementia faster than it would be normally. And, you know, it really is such a tough situation that people are in, you know, especially those who can't take their loved ones out. But at the same time, they need someone to help care for them. But at the same time, they don't want to expose them to this virus. Um, you were able to remove your mother temporarily from a care facility. But what can loved ones do if they cannot afford that, but they want to be able to still do something? And some of them may not be able to Skype or, or, or do any sort of phones because their loved ones may be deaf or blind. Yeah, this is so difficult. You know, when you deal with someone with dementia, they don't know what's going on. I mean, this is like someone that functions at the level of a small child. They don't understand why they're being locked in. They don't understand why they're tapping in the glass and seeing their loved one. And, and it's so difficult because you can't substitute these normal interactions. You know, you do the best you can to give them a normal environment, to interact with them, to, to try to let them see their loved ones for birthdays or do Skype or anything. But even if you go through all these measures, it just doesn't replicate the ability of someone to leave a facility and interact with normal people in a normal fashion. And you're personally dealing with this, you know, what did you do and what do you suggest to others, you know, to try to help their loved ones um, who are isolated right now? Yeah, you know, Liz, it's difficult. We live in difficult times and, and I always say, you know, choose life over fear. And my, my concern about this is these people are not being given freedoms. And whether you believe the quarantine is good for them or bad for them, the bottom line is they're not being given the choice to make those decisions. I, I took my mother out in March and she's been out. This is five months these people have been locked. We have created a prison for prisoners that have committed no crime. And my mother's being told maybe she can go back in October. And if she goes back, she has to quarantine in her room for 14 days. She has to be locked, isolated in a room for 14 days. And I can't speak for senior citizens. I can't speak for all these families. But I know my mother and a lot of her friends were willing to sign any waiver to be given the ability to go back to a normal life and take the risk of the virus versus the atrocities that she feels being locked into a room and, and lacking social interaction. Yeah, it's, it's really a controversial issue and, and, you know, people see both sides of it, but it's so heartbreaking uh, just to, to watch the impact because we love our loved ones. Thank you so much, Dr. Chad. Appreciate it. Thanks, Liz. Always a pleasure.